It's no secret that getting fit takes hard work. But is it the same amount of work for everyone? If you take 100 people, give them exactly the same diet, give them exactly the same training, we're going to get most of those people coming up with different results. For example, you have people that will increase their fitness in 30% and will lose 4 kilos, whereas others will increase their fitness in 10% and will lose only 2 kilos. So why is it that some people respond better to training than others? It's a question that's bewildered many of us who've embarked on a new exercise regime. Now, a new study into the genetics of fitness may have the answers. To find out more, I went to the new Institute of Sport, Exercise and Active Living at Victoria University. Hi, David. Hi, welcome. Lovely to meet you. <laughs> Professor David Bishop spearheads a team of researchers trying to determine whether athletes are born or made. Everyone's had that experience, that frustration of seeing someone else train beside them and seemingly making big gains in fitness while they're slugging away and not making the same gains. And what we're finding is that there's some genetic reasons that can actually explain this phenomenon. Clues to how genes may influence your sporting performance can be found in studies on twins. From twins and family studies, we learned that genetics is very important because if you have identical twins, it has been shown that they are responding similarly to training, whereas when you have non-identical twins, they are responding very differently to training. So genetics is really, really important in the response to training. These researchers are focusing on the alpha actinin 3 gene commonly referred to as the speed gene. Now there are two variants of the gene, an X and an R, and you inherit one from each parent. If you have two copies of the R gene, it's likely that you're good at explosive sports like sprinting. If you have two copies of the X gene, then you may be better at endurance sports like marathon running. Most of the population sits in the middle as RX. That part we've known for a long time that sprinters tend to have the speed gene, and endurance athletes tend not to have the speed gene. But what we're interested in is, if you don't have this speed gene, we think that you will respond better to training. So in this case, lacking the speed gene has the advantage. These researchers think that endurance athletes respond better to exercise because their muscles have a greater energy capacity in their mitochondria. The mitochondria are the powerhouse of our muscles, so they produce all of the energy that we need to do everything. They convert nutrients from our food into ATP, which is the source of energy for our cells. If you go for a walk, they will work even harder to produce the greater amount of energy that you need. And then again, if you go for a run, they will work even harder still to supply the energy that you need. I was curious to find out what my genes would say about how I respond to exercise. So I'm about to have my DNA tested. I'll get the results later. But first, Dr Nia Anon shows me how they put a group of keen exercisers through their paces. Yes, yeah, so it's automatically it's programmed yeah. with every four minutes. Right. We increase the resistance 30 watts. Right. So it's getting harder, but he has to keep his RPM. Right. Well done, well done. Get up. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Study participants undergo a four week program where their diet and training is closely controlled. We're going to hit the wall in three, two, one, and start. Start, start. This means any difference in their response to training is likely to be due to genetics. So I will give you some uh, lower resistance to cool down now. Okay. The subjects are separated according to whether they are XX or RR, and their mitochondrial function is assessed by taking a muscle biopsy. 
All of our participants will give us a small piece of their muscle. It's very small, it's probably three or four grains of rice, so they won't miss it too much. And with that, we can measure the function of their mitochondria. And so that tells us how well do their mitochondria produce energy within their muscles. Okay, try Just to bite it. Breathe, breathe, bite it and breathe normally. And then... Also during the intense bike training, can you breathe? They test VO2 max, a measure of how much oxygen is consumed at maximum exertion. Good job, good job. It's not good going job. to last for long. The more oxygen they consume, the fitter they are. As we see here, uh, he's oxygen mobilizing. Just about to run, Alevi. You did fantastic. You did fantastic today. We're really right at the starting line of this massive study. And so far, we've recruited and we've screened about 100 participants, but we need hundreds more to be able to look at this. Ten seconds left. These researchers already have preliminary results. What you can see here, we've got the two groups. Over here, we've got participants who lack the speed gene, and on the left, participants who have the speed gene. And we've also got the before and after training results. And as you can see here, the people who lack the speed gene have got almost twice the improvement in mitochondrial function compared to those who have the speed gene. So these early results certainly look promising, don't they? Yeah, they're very exciting. Mm. Now it's time to get my results. Will I have the genes to help me be a sprinter or a marathon runner? Or will I be somewhere in between? Mm -hmm. As you can see here, your Rx, it right. means that one of your genotypes that came from either your mother or your, or your father is R, and the other one is X. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I'm not RR means that I probably won't be an Olympic sprinter. It means that by this gene, you're probably reducing your chances to be a lead sprinter. However, there are a lot of other genes that may compensate on these genes, and we haven't discovered them yet, so. Well, I'll make sure I don't give up my day job. Please don't. <laughs> Kathy Freeman had an encouraging win in her pet event to post her fastest time since the Sydney Olympics. The athletes are both born and made, and I call it the 50-50 theory. So we've got around 50% that is attributed to the environment, and 50%, about 50% is genetic, and you can train as much as you can, but if you don't have this suitable genetic makeup, you probably get as far as, but you won't be a world champion. But what does this mean for the average Joe? Research now shows there's a wide variation in how people respond to exercise. There's going to be some super responders who will have big gains in whatever type of fitness you're looking at. But there's some people who, probably because of their genes, we don't see them getting much of a response to training. In fact, around 15% of people are non-responsive to exercise when you measure VO2 max and muscle strength. However, if you are a non-responder, that's no excuse to become a couch potato. You need to keep training because the training is not only about your view to max response to training that has a lot of other health benefits, for instance, for the heart and lower your, your cholesterol and other health-related traits. So exercise anyway is important for all people, even for the responders and the non-responders.